And we are back with Am I Live? I am back after not being here for a couple episodes. And Brad Dieter is with me as always. Hello, Brad. Jay, did you like how extra my dance moves before the show were today? <clears throat> I did. They were spectacular. I'm so pumped that it's Friday and that we made it through this week. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I still got to work tomorrow. so. I mean, yeah, but you can sleep in a little more tomorrow than you probably did today um no i naturally like wake up at like 4 30 or 5 yeah but you don't have to tomorrow. i don't have to all right but i just will and then i'll yeah. just lay in bed but screaming. isn't it amazing how the difference is like getting up at 4 30 on like a tuesday versus getting <clears throat> up at 4 30 on a saturday on tuesday you're like oh on saturday you're like yeah i got this no i'm annoyed either way okay <laughs> All right. well, uh, welcome back to the show it's nice of you to join us again yeah well i kind of got sick of you so i need a break i mean that's fair that's very reasonable and and you were you were just as sick of me so we needed a we needed a break i was i was done i was over it. <clears throat> yeah you guys should have seen the mean text brad was sending me <laughs> that's so not true he was sending me texts that were like ma- mean evil gifts and that was like if you put them together, it's spelled out. I hate you, and you suck. My gift game was on fire yesterday. It was your gift game's always on fire, though. That's, that's true. So, uh, <clears throat> first of all, let's open the show by saying uh, the new Truicy course is officially launched. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, that so if thing. if you're listening to us on the podcast and we're like 19 weeks behind because I have not edited podcast audio in a few days because i have no more raw audio that i can upload uh so you'll probably be listening to this in like january of 2021 but the neutral rookie course has been launched for about three months at this point we launched it uh tuesday yeah tuesday so what is the neutral wiki course brad that's a good question jay what is it that's why i asked you oh you want me to answer the NutraWiki course is a course that is designed for the consumer slash client uh, to give them the basic foundational education around nutrition to kind of control their own life. That's okay, my will, elevator pitch. Will it give you a certification? Um, it will give you a certificate that you can put on your fridge. Yeah. Does it allow it, you to teach people afterwards? No. <clears throat> no, it it won't. Is, so that's that's one of the questions I've been getting. So we do we have anything like that in the works? Yes, we do. Okay. So this is kind of like a primer into nutrition. Um, <clears throat> if you want more of a, you know, w- with coaching, your coach will answer questions, provide you with resources, so you have a better understanding of nutrition. If you want a systematic approach to that, <clears throat> if you're not in coaching and want that, if you're in the group, you're just tired of going through all the information and not knowing what to sort sort through to understand the the basics of nutrition um, that's not being hyped up or sold in a you know a dieting system to you. Um, this is <clears throat> where you go. It's a self guided course. Um, there is you can start and stop as lo- as often as you'd like. It's uh, take self. As as it's self guided, but you have it's like one of those uh, audio self guided tours yeah. through like gear up or whatever yeah there are video lectures there is uh there are written le- written uh lectures i don't know if you want to call them that there's a written textbook that's broken written. up into modules there's okay. a full audio book full audio book yeah and there is also <clears throat> transcribed audio transcribed audio and full downloads of all the, the lecture slides as well this um, is very true so there's plenty of Plenty of resources out, plenty of things included in this. It is a fantastic course. Uh, I've gone through it about five times testing it. So you can go to macrosinc.net slash NutraWiki hyphen course hyphen sign up. Uh, and you can sign up right there. Or if you go to NutraWiki.org, you can sign up directly through there as well. Can we? I believe so. I think there's a link on the homepage. There should be. Let's see. If there's not, the web guy, the guy who developed that, the web part. Hmm. I don't see it. All right, well, I'll get that up today. Wow. Well, that was that was not my that was you know a web developer kidding. guy's cool. job who's on the other side of my screen. Is that me? I don't know. I'm assuming. I, I don't either. I, I'll blame the dog. It's his fault. All right. Uh, I blame I blame Brad Morgan. That that's also true. Yeah. I don't think he's ever listened to a single one of these, so we can blame him for everything. I blame him for I've been blaming him for everything for like five years. So you know how you said this was kind of like an entry point. 
We'll yeah. call this like the gateway drug for nutrition education. <laughs> this is like just enough to get you hooked into good behaviors. <clears throat> All right. And now that we're demonetized from YouTube. <laughs> um, <laughs> Are, we're not even monetized. Uh, we, we're not eligible now for, mon <laughs> for monetizing How can we on be YouTube. Demonetized if I've never been monetized. <clears throat> I bet that that's fine. I bet you that if we, I wonder how many of our episodes would be ineligible for for that based on the words that we use. All of them. Yeah. I'm gonna mute myself. Uh, that's funny. Your dog's barking, and somebody said, "I'm just here for Brad's dog in the background, right before your dog barks." Yep. Your dogs have such puffy tails. Somebody's walking their dog. You're going to see them in the window. I saw it. Here. I yeah. just saw it. So that's why they're losing their minds. Somebody asked when the course is coming out. So the course is out. It came out on Tuesday. Um, and it does not, it, it results in a, in a certificate, but it does not result in a certification. So you get a little certificate that uh, Dr. Dieter over there signed. <clears throat> you can, at the end of the course, um, you can put it in one of those very big bougie frames that you buy for like a billion dollars when you graduate college. Yeah, and yours truly designed it, so you absolutely should should display that. <laughs> How uh, many that was... hours did you spend <laughs> battling the software to design that? I don't even want to say out loud because my graphic design skills, I mean, the certificate looks kick-ass. My graphic design skills are... Um, out of this world? At, at none is, is, a gen is a generous word to say to my graphic design skills, but it... Uh, it it definitely took me over twenty hours. Oh my god! No, it <laughs> and it's not that good of a certificate. Did it really take you twenty hours? Probably, it probably took me close to fifty. It probably took me about fifteen. Yeah. How, how was that even possible? Because I couldn't get any of the formatting right. It was just such a I, like I I I, did, I can't do stuff like that. Like that's just <laughs> I can do like the web. You want me to lay out a website for you? Okay, but I can't. Uh, I, it, I, I, it, 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 it wasn't even that was hard. Today? It went what? It took you how long to tie your shoes today? I'm wearing sandals. <laughs> <laughs> that joke backfired so hard. I wear sandals every day. Uh, okay, See? so the for the for the people who aren't watching the show live, Jay has like on one of those uh, like 1970s Alaska wilderness survival uh, flannel shirt. I have a flannel shirt that I use when I ride horses when it's cold, and uh, and he's wearing sandals. So I feel like. You I really don't know whether you're like the most badass person I've ever met. Sorry, you two. I'm going to get demonetized for saying that word. Or you're like a 1970s hippies commune leader. I can't tell. Uh, take that back. We'll be fighting. So you want to <laughs> you, you want to hear an even better one? So for anybody who doesn't know, I have I, I played hockey. I have a bunch of fake teeth, and <clears throat> um, so I have much fake teeth from playing hockey and. Some of them, I take some of them out at night, and I left my house, got to my office morning. I was like, "Oh crap, I don't have my teeth in," <laughs> and had to go all the way back home to go get my teeth. So I stopped at Seven Eleven to get to get an energy drink, and was talking to the guy. I have on this flannel, this huge beard, long hair, uh, wearing sandals, my flannel, and uh, no teeth. So I looked like a, uh, That's... and I was half I was half awake because it was like five oh five in the morning. That's so funny. Yeah, I'm sure he was a little scared. So uh, for the Debbie, people who showed up today that actually wanted to learn something. So I Debbie said, I know, uh, but you said there was another course coming out with a certification. Now a certificate. Yes. Correct. Yeah. That will probably be mid 2021. Um, that will be a, um, a, a longer course that will result in what certification, Brad? Do we know yet? Or can we say yet? Um, we'll leave that under wraps, but imagine you... The you'll goal get an industry that, certification in it. You'll get a an industry certification that allows you, that gives you the credentials to coach people from a nutrition perspective. There'll be kind of two routes you can go. You can go just through kind of the the nutrition coaching arm, or you can go through. It'll be um, we're still deciding on the name, but it'll be a full program that involves kind of entry level education, advanced nutrition education, uh, personal training, uh, an obesity weight loss focus um, and then a actual additional education that's just how to what like the how to do online coaching right because in-person coaching and online coaching are very different and i feel like we've kind of paved the way for how to actually do that at a pretty high level in the industry so we're actually going to kind of take some of the things that we've learned and put that together so people can kind of go from zero to hero <clears throat> in yeah the so whole program 
Yeah. So you'll be able to go from, and it doesn't matter. It'll all be broken down. So if you're already a, online, uh, if you're already a, a trainer and you want more knowledge on how to train people online, you can take that section. If you have different compo- different certifications, you can pick and choose what you want. If you want to go from absolutely nothing all the way through to being somebody who would be qualified to work at Macros Inc., um, you'll have that option too. Yes. <clears throat> I, th- I think that what, what, what we should also do is like the top like if you get over an overall score of like 90% or better on everything, you get a free interview for a job. Dude, that's genius. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I'm smart. I, I have like smart that. No, note that Brad said my idea was genius on uh, September 18th at 9, 10 a.m. Central time. So yeah, I have good ideas every once in a while. I would say most of your ideas are good. Some of them are just completely unfeasible. <laughs> but that's because I'm like three glasses of scotch in like, Brad! <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, awesome. uh, I don't text you the political <laughs> rants that I write. All no, the time. You, sh- you should, though. Oh, you would you would cry at some of them. I text them to Dylan pretty often because Dylan encourages my bad behavior, my, my ranting behavior. And then he'll, I'll wake up to like six or seven like memes that he knows are going to like, I'm going to have to respond to. I don't get mad at him. I just have to respond and write like long papers to him. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Sarah asked if I was 80. I am in fact 80. Um, I go to bed at like, I'm in bed at like eight o'clock and I woke up at like four 30. So yeah, that's pretty much. I eat dinner at like four 45 every night. Dude, that's, that's our house. Cause my wife has to like leave for work at six. Yeah. So like I'll be like doing something. I'll be like, hey, I got to jam home for dinner, and people are like, it's four thirty, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, we eat dinner at like five o'clock in my house. Yep, yep, yeah, same. It's crazy. Uh, see, Shanna said in North Dakota we wear flannels and short with shorts and flip flops. Exactly. I just don't really like shorts. I mean, I wear basketball shorts at home all the time, but in public I don't ever wear shorts. I don't very rarely. But yeah, same. Um, uh, let's see. Somebody said, how far below painful calorie intake is too low to get results? Um, when it gets to the point where you can't adhere to it anymore. Okay. Uh, Debbie asked, will there be a section on setting macros for others? Yeah. Faux sheezy. Um, same, but I just have a toddler. <laughs> Dude, that was like my dogs were pacing in my room all night last night. And they woke me up at like 2.30 and wouldn't let me go back to bed. That's why I don't let dogs in my room. And then I got up and then they went to sleep. Yeah, dogs are horrible. Yeah. The only thing worse than dogs are children. And yes, I mean that. Uh, Sarah <laughs> said Sarah. <laughs> she's very excited about the course. It's in her 10 year plan to work for Macros Inc. You guys have up leveled my life in every way. First of all, thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, second of all, hopefully we can shorten that so it's not a 10 year plan. Hopefully we have taken over the entire world in 10 years or less. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's jump into our topic that everybody came for, and that is eat less is bad advice. God, I remember when I wrote this article, how much just flack I got. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of picked a punchy title and people were upset. Yeah. I mean, what a clickbait title, Brad. (laughs) So clickbait, but it it worked. So what is, so eating less. So if (sighs) I want everything that you've ever, that I've ever read, anything I've ever learned, anything you've ever told me, anything you've ever preached on this podcast is food quantity is what matters for weight loss. This is, is true. You, okay. So if I eat less, which would to me would mean eat less. So how, why have you been giving me bad advice? So this, uh, the title is a little tongue in cheek, but it is oh, accurate at the same time. You tricky um, minx. So, yeah. So we know that a calorie deficit is the only way to induce weight loss, right? Um, the other thing, and I'll kind of just address this up front is, the idea of kind of starvation mode where too low calories kind of prevents you from losing weight is also really not true in the sense of the word that most people think. Um, we've we've given lectures on metabolic adaptation and we'll probably give that one like every quarter for the rest of our lives because it's just one of those hot topics. Um, so just realize like that's also not a, a thing that we really need to be overly worried about. <clears throat> but here's the rub. You can have a 500 calorie a day deficit at a intake of a thousand and an expenditure of 1500, right? You can have a 500 calorie a day deficit at a 3000 calorie a day intake and a 35 
3,500 calorie a day expenditure. There's a world of difference between those two things, right? If you think about if you're expending 1,500 calories a day and you're consuming 1,000, what type of like physical activity are you doing in a given day if you're if you're burning just 1,500 calories a day? Like, let's just say your average Wait, person. If I'm burning 1,500? If you're burning total, if your total daily energy expenditure is 1,500 calories a day, what are you doing in a given day? Like, what does your not, daily physical activity look like? Not much. Yeah, that's like opening the bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. Like, I thought, sorry, I thought you were asking, yeah, opening the jerk. I thought you, <laughs> I thought you were asking, what exercise are you doing that's burning fifteen hundred calories? I was gonna, no, I don't know. So, like, I that's literally doing, calories. like, yeah, you're like, you're, <laughs> you're not, uh, you're not exercising for sure. Um, you're probably not moving off the couch. You're really overly sedentary, right? So that's basically you give your body a lack of stimulus, right? So you're not eliciting any sort of, should I grow muscle tissue? Should I grow bone tissue? Should I improve my cardiovascular system? Should I make my metabolism more flexible? You're giving yourself no like beneficial adaptation signals, right? So you can lose weight by being super sedentary and just eating very little food, but your body composition, your cardiovascular health, your metabolic health, your bone health, all those things, even though you're losing weight, are going to deteriorate. Now, if you consume 3,000 calories a day and you have a lot of energy and you can sleep well and your knee's high and you crush the gym, your hormones are better. You're building more bone tissue. You're building more muscle tissue. Your cardiovascular um, you know, output is improving. You're building more capillaries. You're, you're, doing, you're making your metabolism more flexible. You're doing all those things as well. So one of the things that we always have to remember is sometimes eating less food is not the actual long-term weight loss answer, right? Um, sometimes it's how do we shift your entire kind of approach to weight loss to be at a deficit at a higher level? Um, and in this article, which we can post here somewhere, um, is it kind of reviews some of the literature over if we follow people for several years <clears throat> and we kind of track them, right? Do they have like what we'll call high energy flux, which is like the let's, you know, consume 3,500 or let's consume 3,000 calories a day and expend 3,500 or let's, you know, be at like 2,500 and 2,000. Let's be at, you know, 1,500 and, and 1,000, right? If we kind of look at those people, who has the better body composition over time? Um, and the answer is the higher energy flux people. Um, so the more that you kind of even if you hold your deficit similar, the higher your energy flux is, generally the better your overall health outcomes and body composition is over time. You're a flux. That was my monologue. I think that's the longest I've ever talked in one stretch on this show. That was the quietest I've ever been in my entire that's life. That's probably true. <laughs> so <laughs> that the most not that's why I have to mute my mic so I don't interrupt. So with with that kind of concept, like how have you seen this play out when you've been coaching people and how would you say we see this play out like with our clients and kind of people who have, you know, resistant weight loss? Yeah, I mean, I've seen it play out with myself. You know, you you my, I, I've seen it in in every aspect. The I'm dieting down to X weight I'm eating. I want to diet down to X weight and I'm eating, you know, only 1200 calories a day. Well, how do you, you ask the client? How do you feel during the day? Oh, I, I don't really do anything. <laughs> I crash. Yeah, I, I I I get up, I go to work, I get up, I begrudgingly go to the gym because that's the only time of the day I have energy is when I first wake up. I have five cups of coffee. <clears throat> I go to work. Um, I ha I take a nap in my car during lunch. That was the one that I used. To, I, I've heard from people. Um, I take a card in my uh, nap in my car during lunch. And then uh, be, uh, one, because I'm tired, and two, because I don't want to be around food because my food's so low. And then I go home, <clears throat> and I I have to uh, you know take hang out with my family. And then I'm in I I just lay on the couch the rest of the day. Weekends, what do you do? Oh, I just I go I work out and then I lay on the couch. Yeah. Well, that's that's why you're only eating 1,200 calories. If we if 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 we could ramp you up in activity, you could probably eat. 300, 400, 500 more calories a day, depending on the activity. Um, I, I think like with me, for when, when I was dieting down for bodybuilding show, when you're on, <clears throat> when I was on 1500 calories a day, I felt like absolute crap. I would literally walk, I, I would have to lay down 
walking from the front of my office to the back from the front entrance of my office. And when I got into my office, my actual office, I had to lay down for like 20 minutes because I was so exhausted. And then, and then you start, that's the way I've always realized that my calories are too low and maybe I'm crazy. Anybody who's listening, please comment if you do this too. Cause I've, I've never actually talked about this. I have, I, I always know that I, I need more food when I start trying to make less trips, right? Obviously, we all try to get all the groceries up in one trip, but that I do with every. And if I'm going into the kitchen and I'm going back to the living room to go sit down, I will make sure I have my glass. It's it ha- I, I I will make everything in one trip. I will load up glass. This I might need a piece of paper and pen. I don't want to come back for it. Um, and if I forget something, it's too far when it's only across the room, and I just leave it. Um, and that's, that's how I know when I'm, I start calculating things I need to do by steps or by how much energy is going to be used. And that's, uh, that's when I get too low. But my, my question for you, Brad, would you recommend, you know, if we're going to ramp up calories and increase activity so people can diet down on more, which would you say would come first? I obviously, you're, you're low on energy. You don't have much and your motivation goes out the window at that point too. Would you say that it's better to ramp up calories first or increase activity first or do both simultaneously? Um, I mean, obviously the best is to do both simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Um, the next answer is it really depends on the person. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to default to giving people the tools that they need to succeed before asking them to do something they're not prepared to do. Right. So I'd be like, hey, if if I want you to chop, <laughs> this is the best analogy I can think of. If you want to chop, if you want somebody to chop down a tree, right, you can either pull a Monty Python and ask them to do it with a frozen herring, or you can give them an axe, right? Or a chainsaw. So, yeah. Or a chainsaw. <laughs> but we don't like to give people power tools because they could cut their legs off. Um, Didn't you get hurt with a mall chopping? Yeah, but that wasn't my fault. <laughs> we'll tell we'll tell that story after this. Um, so, like, if you have somebody who's very low energy, they're really not losing weight. They can't get to the gym because they're too tired. And you're like, "Hey, we can increase your food when you break out of this funk you're in." They're like, "Okay, well, if the tool to get me out of this funk and have more energy to do something is giving you three, four hundred calories more a day, <clears throat> let's just do that." And then. If we do that for a week and it's like, hey, I'm still not getting to the gym, then we kind of have the conversation. But it's kind of hard to dangle the like, do this and then you can eat more food carrot because it's like that, that kind of starts to build a bad relationship with, you know, food between you and your client, et cetera. Because now you're kind of like the, the warden at the jail instead of the like, hey, here's the keys to the kingdom. You're a warden at a jail. <laughs> I would not like that. So, how do we determine that balance, right? Like if I'm dieting down on a certain amount of calories, my energy is low, my progress is minimal or stalled. What do I, how, how do I know how much to increase by? So I still make progress. How do I find this balance of increased activity and increased caloric intake? Uh, that's a great question. And I don't think we have know it was. Like, like perfect answers to that. Um, My thoughts on that are you want to make a meaningful increase, but you don't want to make it so big that it's going to cause massive changes in the scale, right? Um, So let's say we give somebody, you know, three, 400 calories a day. Like let's say their, their current intake is 1200 calories a day. That, that seems like a pretty reasonable number that a lot of people diet on. If we give them three or 400 calories a day, that's what almost a 30% increase in their calorie intake. That's enough to kind of give people a substantial amount more kind of pep in their step, so to speak, um, without putting so much that they're gonna that they could gain a pound in a week if they didn't exercise, right? I mean, you're looking at maybe a half a pound if they don't change anything, but it's probably more like maybe a quarter to a third after your body kind of processes the increase in in food intake. Um, so that's kind of a good heuristic is twenty. 25, 30% increases for kind of at lower calorie intakes. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I like to, when, when we are increasing it, when I asked the question earlier on, which do you do first? I, you know, it depends is, is the answer. Typically though, I find that when somebody is, is in this 
they get this like general malaise where they're where they're real lethargic and don't want to do anything and you know they're real low. Um, I like to increase. I, I think at that point it's time to take a diet break, anyways. So I typically yeah. will increase, bring them back up to maintenance, and then leave them at maintenance. And let's just increase your after two weeks, your weight may come up a little bit from all the you know extra food, water, carbs, sodium, but you're not going to gain body fat. We, you might be people are surprised that. They'll they'll gain two pounds over two weeks on a diet break, and they're hold, they'll gain in, they'll gain that two pounds in three days, and then they'll just hold there with that extra two pounds for two weeks on five hundred more calories a day, and they're real surprised. And then they say, "Oh, I'm feeling great," and they're moving around. Okay, well, let's start dieting. Well, let's keep these calories here, and let's just increase your activity by two hundred and fifty calories a day. I mean, it's it's that's a much simpler approach. And uh, you, know, I, I found people who who we, we increase their activity by simply adding in a, a 20 minute run three or four days a week. And they're losing at double the rate they were when they were on less calories eating five yeah. more a day. Yeah. And so I think, you know, that's, this is part of the problem, right? Is this idea of like, Hey, my body's in starvation mode. If I eat more food, I'll lose more weight. A lot of times eating more food just completely changes your behavior patterns, right? It has nothing to do with you've fixed a broken metabolism, right? Um, it's more like, hey, you've kind of reset most of what you're doing, right? You've kind of changed your mindset about your diet. You're far more adherent. You're moving a lot more. Like your needs probably gone up four or five hundred calories a day. You're going to the gym. You're sleeping better. All those things start to happen. Um, so this is why kind of very low calorie approaches. The wheels can fall off the bus for a lot of reasons. Um, and so there there are periods and there's times where like, hey, we probably need more calories and not less. That also doesn't mean that if you hit a wall in your diet, you the only answer is you need to eat more. Right. Yeah. No, it's definitely a, a tool in your toolbox. And I would say it's it's probably more not even a tool, it's more of a resource, right? Like this is just part of the manual on how to diet. And yep, people just don't don't realize it because you haven't put all those pieces together yet. I think this is something that that in my opinion, being able to understand when eating less is is bad. And, and how to actually and successfully navigate that and counteract that and explain it. That's what separates a, that's what, that's what makes you a high level coach, right? That's yeah. what, that's what coaching is about. If we, uh, any coach we have is capable of not only capable of explaining this and properly executing it, but they're capable of identifying it. And I think that's, that's a big problem. You see people who might try things, but they're not trying at the right time. You might you might be at twelve hundred calories, real lethargic, and and not have any energy because your goals aren't properly aligned, right? You might just not have the motivation, and it's not that you need somebody to stand there as a cheerleader, but maybe you don't know why you're trying to lose weight, <laughs> and and it's just not it's just not enjoyable. Because I've seen people who have gone down to nine hundred calories a day when their when their maintenance is fifteen hundred. I've seen these some some women who have been on next to nothing who just don't care. Mm -hmm. They have, they're especially competitors or they're trying to make weight or they want, they have a, a, uh, an event coming up, a family function, something, and they're motivated to go on low calories and they do perfectly fine. But once you take that motivation away, there's no hope. Yeah. And I think that's one of the big things, right? I think a lot of people look for <clears throat> like, what's the technical answer to my problem? Yeah. And a lot of times the technical answer is not the answer. That's the actual answer. You're a technical answer to my problem. I generally give you technical answers. Yeah. Do you give everybody technical answers or is it just me? Mm. Mm. We'll have to take a poll on that. A poll. Oh, my God. It's like the, uh, the conversation my wife and I always have. Are you at the problem-solving phase of this or are you at the emotional phase of this? Because <laughs> they're two very different ways of dealing with a problem. Oh, my God. Oh my God! I would. I if you and I were murder were married, there would be a murder. <laughs> There's been a murder in Savannah. You know what show that's from? No, no, it's I don't. from The Office when they're doing the oh, murder. Oh yeah, that's right. When they're like, oh, everybody God. thinks maybe that's... they're all gonna get fired, and Michael's yeah. like, hey, we're and gonna Michael do a murder that. mystery. Yeah, when they have co-managers and Jim's against it, and then yeah, I remember now. <laughs> and uh, and Andy's trying to teach people how to speak in a southern accent. Yeah. He's like, no, it's more like my lash is dripping out of your mouth. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, I think I just watched that episode not long ago. All right, we got some questions. Do we really? <clears throat> Facebook user, somebody from the group said, "Preach." 
Love Hallelujah. This. Now, if we can only get clients to listen to the concept of high energy flux. So I'm guessing this is one of our coaches. See, this is where we just need, oh, Jay, this is our next revenue stream for the business. Have you, do you remember? Um, I think it's both the 1984 and a Clockwork Orange where they like put you in this thing and like make you watch yeah. all this stuff until you become like uh, brainwashed, like a re-education camp. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna like send out macros Inc. VR headsets to people, and they have to like <laughs> sit in their house for a week and have their brain retrained for high energy flux. Oh my god, <laughs> we've now officially been demonetized. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna brainwash. They demonetize and unmonetize. One. Oh my god, I like that idea though, but I, I just want to do it for many other things. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if I could put that, get a VR headset, put it on Lisa and say, stop buying horse stuff. I don't if know. you've ever wanted to see an, ex I thought that shooting was an expensive <laughs> hobby and coins was an expensive, collecting coins was an expensive hobby. You should see how expensive. Dude, horses are crazy. Dude, it is the, the like keeping a horse is expensive. I think everybody understands that, but I didn't realize that buying like you, you it's like it's like clothes shopping, right? Like you buy different buying the tack for the horse is ten times worse than you just need one thing. If I get one more saddle delivered to my house this year, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I don't you're even not, know anymore. You're not just gonna look like a 1970s Alaska homeless man. No, no, I'm gonna be living. I'm going to actually be homeless, living with me and the horses in the middle of a field, just to keep me warm. I'll be in the herd. Uh, all uh, right. And one of our horses broke his nose, and now it's just been a big. Oh my! See, Poor this Alan. is why I don't have things like that. Well, I mean, I, the dogs are still more expensive. I've had <laughs> animals. I had a the cat who had a dilated atrial heart failure <clears throat> and cancer, and then I had the German Shepherd who tore her ACL, a bladder infection, and when she got spayed, she had an infection, had to have that fixed. So you know, animals are fun. Yeah. All right. Susan said, can you still lose weight by following your macros or do you need to do cardio and lift weights to see results? If so, what is the amount of time that you should spend working out to see fat loss effect? You take part, I'll take part, Brad. Which part do you want? Um, yes, you can lose weight by just following macros. And by following macros, it's like have a set calorie count, mm -hmm. know what your deficit is, be adherent, find a macronutrient ratio that works for you, find a dietary pattern that fits that. You can lose weight doing that, a hundred percent. Yeah, um, and and you can. You, it, it might not be the most optimal, but you absolutely can lose weight. Um, exercise is a minimal component of your weight loss. It's more so for other benefits and to aid in in the weight loss. Um, yep. The effect of the amount of time you should spend working out. Really, the time. I don't like to put an emphasis on the time. I would put an emphasis on consistency. If you can work out one, if you can work out every day for ten minutes, that is better than no days for ten minutes. If you can work out one day a week for an hour, and that's all you can do, work out one day a week for an hour. So whatever time frame you can do, I would say aim for twenty minutes. Twenty minutes to an hour is is right around the best time frame, um, and that's a big blanket statement, but. Whatever you do, do it consistently. That's the main takeaway. Facts. Uh, Nancy said, good morning. Good morning, Nancy. I hope that your morning is as good as Brad's is because he's been, he texted me at 4.45 Chicago time. Is that what time it was? Something like that. It was probably like 2.30 my time. Yeah, 2.30 your time, 4.30 my time. We were both up, which was, <laughs> were you expecting me to be up and reply? I, I just figured you're always up. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. phone rats throw Lisa across the bed. My phone grab my phone is Brad. I was actually in my car already driving to the office when you texted me. Was this was this with your teeth or without your without, teeth? Without, without, yeah. And then I got distracted because I didn't have all my teeth in. Oh, uh, that's so funny. Yep. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Been a long morning already, Brad. Um and Latasha Stewart said. Diet break only successful at two weeks. Mentally trying to be open to it. I see signs that I may need a break. No, it, it, um, a diet break. So I'll go over the mental aspects, Brad. You can go over the actual, if there are physiological benefits. Um, the technical answer. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, mental, the mental side of a diet break is whatever you need, right? If you've been dieting, some people just need it for a weekend. Some people need it for two months. So whatever you feel, like if you feel yourself like having obsessions with foods that you normally don't eat, it's time for a diet break, right? We need to get back to a normal non-restrictive diet. Um, <clears throat> if you 
if you find yourself, you know, you're dieting and you find yourself two days a week, just eating at night, like going off and just eating until you're like not feeling well, time to take a diet break and step back. Um, th these are all things that happen when, when we're, when we're getting fixated on food and there are physiological reasons for, you know, you, your hunger hormones get kind of messed up when you're dieting, you, you're, you're tired, you're depleted. Um, so at the two week is typically where, where I have found that people start to be like, all right, yeah, I I'm good. I got, I got to go out to eat a couple times. I saw some friends. I, I didn't track for two weeks. I'm, I didn't gain a bunch of weight. I'm good. Let's start back up. Um, but I've had people who have done it for three months. I took, I took a, a diet break where I tracked at maintenance for six months once. Um, and that's how long it took me to finally get over some food obsessions that I was dealing with. So it's really just a personal preference. Yeah. Um, the, there's really no hard evidence to how long you need to diet break. Um, there's, you can do it a lot of different ways. You can do it for a lot of different time periods. Um, and a lot of it depends on how long you've been... Like if you've been constantly dieting for five years, you probably need more than a day off, right? You probably oh, yeah. need several weeks or maybe right. a month or six months. Um, and so that's a big piece of it. It depends on like how much weight you've lost. If you've lost 10 or 15 pounds and you're like, hey, I need a break, maybe a couple of weeks. If you've lost 100 pounds, maybe it's several months. Um, so it's really like from a physiological perspective, there's no like perfect answer yeah agreed unfortunately Nancy said she is in chicago i'm in chicago and then she asked if brad's in chicago no we don't let brad in chicago um Do i you know why why if i came to chicago i would buy too many cars and that would be bad yeah the place is right the dealership that you send me cars from all the time is like you can see it from my upstairs <laughs> window oh there is one of the guys who works there is like a huge fitness dude too Mm -hmm. We follow each other on Facebook now. We're we're besties. Um, he's always posting. He's always posting fitness stuff. So I should be like, dude, I got an idea for you, and we'll become like their official nutrition that, provider. You know what we should do, Brad? You should contact him, and he can just drive me around in a Lamborghini because it's an exact car dealership. So he can drive me around in a Lamborghini while I do the live. Dude, that would you that would actually be awesome. He's and like, I would I would I I really don't care about riding a Lamborghini. I just want to do it to make him jealous. Yeah, why would I be jealous? Because I'm doing drive around a Lamborghini. Lambo life. Oh, yeah. Why did you say Chicago time? Because it was my time. I was just saying it was Chicago time was my time. Yeah, I'm in Chicago. Brad's do you, not. Do you own Chicago? No, I can't stand Chicago. This is the worst place ever. Are worst you excited place. to move to Spokane? I'm not moving to Spokane. You there was are moving I almost to did. I'm not going to lie. I almost did. I'm but, still upset you didn't. Yeah, well, I might I have a better idea for you. <laughs> How about um, Coeur d'Alene? How about what? How about Coeur d'Alene, Idaho? It's like Lake Town life. Not it's to Idaho. very, Talk about it's this. it's very J. We're not moving to Idaho. Well, I'm Nevada. No, we're Nevada. Okay, fine. How about Elko County? I like these small little counties with less than like. 50,000 people in them. They seem very nice. Just you leave can, me alone. Let me build can, a big ass fence. You can move to out. Hall, Montana that has a population of nine people. I would move to Montana in a heartbeat if they didn't get so much. I would move to, my if, if it wasn't for snow, I would move to Montana, North Dakota, or South Dakota in a heartbeat. But I, I'm not moving from Chicago where we get snow to somewhere else where we get snow. I really want to move to like Sedona. Yeah, Sedona is really, really pretty. We're gonna open an office. In Sedona. They have the Teal McDonald's there. What? They have Sedona has um, codes on their signage on buildings, like what colors they can use because it keeps the scenery. And they have vortexes, so you have to keep the vortex energy going. Um, oh, yeah, I like so they, that. The McDonald's. Look up uh, Sedona, Arizona McDonald's. It has teal arches instead of golden to keep up with their uh, Western motif. That's awesome. They also have roundabouts, and I did not realize that. I'd been there years oh, before. That roundabouts are the best. Yeah, oh, I agree. But I'd been there years before, and there's this big open road going into Sedona, and they didn't have roundabouts. So I was driving into Sedona again. It was like, I don't know, five in the morning. It was an early trip from Las Vegas, uh, from Phoenix, and <clears throat> driving, and I didn't know there were roundabouts then. And I just went right over the first one. <laughs> we have, so there are one. <clears throat> Two, three, four, five 
roundabouts within like two miles of my house. It's awesome. Yeah, they're nice. They're my preferred way to travel. Nancy said she is in Elmhurst, which is a suburb, and I am in currently I'm in Geneva, where my office is, but I live in uh, Whedon. So we are not too far from each other, but not not close, but definitely not far. Zipporah, oh, Zipporah starting so many. She always starts problems. She did I tell you? Did did I tell you she emailed me and yelled at me? I emailed you. me and yelled at me for. I think it was for your email. Now I think she read one of your emails and was like, "This this email is horrible, and you guys are horrible people." And I'm, I'm. I think in, we covered this the last time you were here. Yeah, I know, and I'm still really. And she didn't about. actually yell at you. No, she didn't say any of that. She's just like the nicest <laughs> person I think I've ever talked to, but. Uh, should we answer uh, her question here for her? Yeah, she said, Zephora said, I up my man, Brent's getting bossy. Did you guys hear that? Can we Jay, answer? get back on task. Stop right small this talk. Minute. You're the one who wanted to do a talk show. Um, I up my carbs for maintenance and see definite positive impact on lifting, but I also noticed my RHR rose. Is that normal? It is normal. Mm -hmm. So, resting like a depressed resting heart rate can be either good or bad. Um, and a lot of times, you can have changes that increase it and that can be good or bad or it can just be just an effect and not be good or bad. So a lot of times, if you have very low carbohydrate intake um, and you're kind of in a weight loss piece, you can actually see drops in thyroid um, levels and when you re and that can drop your resting heart rate, right? And that's not necessarily a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It just kind of is what it is. Um, and then when you re up your carbohydrate intake, your thyroid function will increase a little bit and that can increase your resting heart rate because mm -hmm. your resting heart rate is controlled um, through central nervous system, also through some metabolic effects, things like that. Perfect. Uh, Nancy is, uh, Leanne said, good morning. Good morning, Leanne. Hola. Buenos uh, dias. He asked if my horses are in Whedon. They're in Warrenville, which is the suburb frame. There's a suburb, just next suburb. It's, it's all the same area, basically. So just in Warrenville at a barn. Yeah, I don't know why it's like every major city has like 50 billion suburbs. Just like call it Chicago proper and then Chicago. I think they should get rid of all small towns and just call them all and just have counties. I think it's stupid. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it just, just seems easier. I mean, because half of like, like half of my county is on like i think it's i think it's 10 percent or 15 percent of my county is unincorporated <laughs> like and and most of my county if you by my house most of it's forest preserved so i don't even understand why we have villages that cover forest preserved land huh. Seems silly anyways um brad yes if you had a choice between a fillet Okay. Uh, but if you had a choice between a beef fillet, a bison fillet, and a salmon fillet, which would you choose? Um, from what perspective? A health perspective or a tasty perspective? To eat. Well, to rub on your eye if you got another black eye. No, I mean, which like, would you choose? Am I thinking about it from just like what tastes the best or what's the best for me? Whatever. Which one entered your mind first? Like, yes. Um,. Probably a bison fillet. Yeah, bison fillet. There you go. Do you remember when Buffalo had nickels or quarters or whatever they were were like the coolest things ever? Yeah, I have every single Buffalo nickel ever made. Every single mint mark, every single air, including the three legged Buffalo. I have a I have I you were gonna say, I thought you meant like of, you own all of the ones in the world. No, I have I one. Like, I have <laughs> one. I have one example in a mint state sixty or better for every single Buffalo nickel ever made. That's Hilarious. So I like I like coins. Um, but did I, did I tell you about the time a buffalo almost hit my car? Yes. Yeah, Buffalo tried to run into my car when I was at the uh when I was at the Badlands in South Dakota. Uh Nancy uh, said, so I can come to your office and you will coach me. You can come to my office, but I will probably not be here. Not not because you're coming, just because I leave very, very early in the morning. <laughs> I get here really early when there's nobody here. And I leave when people are still coming in to work to start their day. So that means either you don't work that much or you get there that early. I get here that early and then I go and work for home for another five hours. You crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I do. I got here at 5.45 at 5, 5.30 this morning and I'll be leaving at 10.30 and then I'll go home and work for five or six hours at home. Bazinga. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Otherwise, I think we're going to be done. Uh, I got nothing. 
I got nothing either. Um, happy Friday. Happy NutraWiki course launch day. Did anybody sign up while we were live? If they didn't, we're never doing a live again. Okay, let me tell, I'll tell you right now. I guess we're not doing a live again. Uh, oh! No, nobody signed up. Oh, that's not true. Oh, they did it at 6 a.m. At 6 a.m. Okay, well, this was this is the very last one. Arrivederci! Are, are we done? Uh, yes. Oh, somebody did say, we need a whole segment just on female hormones and weight loss after menopause. There are a lot of women that post asking for information on this. So I will say two things about this. One... The email that got the most hate of all the ones we've sent out in the last 12 months was yeah. a scientific discussion about what happens to body composition during menopause. And everybody got very upset that it did not like adhere to what they believed was true. Very, very upset. Yeah. It's like, like, they're like, hey, this is not reflective of the truth. I was like, well, this is what 30 years of research says. So that's the first piece. Second of all, I will bring on an expert who focuses primarily on this topic at some point. Um, but people are not allowed to get upset about objective data. Yeah, and, and whenever we get emails that criticize, whenever we get responses that criticize what the emails are, I forward them right to Brad, all of them. <laughs> I never forward them the good ones that say thank you or this is great because there were a lot of them that really appreciated and had good conversations, but I don't forward those ones to Brad because those don't those, those don't annoy me. So I just forward them the ones where people are complaining because I want him to write the responses so I don't have to. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. I love steak. From In your opinion, from a health standpoint, what's the best cut? Um... I don't know. There's really no single best cut. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you could as long as you trim the fat off of it, the leanest cut, a flank steak, is that the leanest cut? No, I think a tenderloin is. Tenderloin? Okay, so tenderloin. But they're marbled, aren't they? Mm, no, I don't I don't know. That's a good. Uh, but but buffalo is definitely going to be leaner than cow. Um, so bison is definitely, if you're looking for like lower calorie steaks, bison, they're more expensive. If you look at like just bison. overall health, it's probably the liver. Yes. Like it has the most nutrients, but Do it's you like also, liver? no, gross, disgusting, bad. nasty. Ugh. I wouldn't, I, like, I would never be like cook me liver, but I, if I'm somewhere and somebody's like, it's like somebody made liver, like I would eat it. Yeah. Yeah. And except for, um, oh God, a duck liver. Um, what's that called in French? Um, Foie gras, foie gras, yeah. But that is like they just force feed them corn. Yeah, but it's, it's not horrible. Oh, it's my like God. it's like animal butter. No, it, I had it at five different restaurants when I was in France, and it was Trash. And I've had it in the U.S. too, and I thought maybe I didn't like it here, and I was like, well, <clears throat> maybe I should try it in France and see how it is. And everywhere I went, it was just absolutely horrible. I I mean, don't get me wrong, I ate it, but it was horrible. <laughs> oh. I my mom will not listen to this, but it's her birthday, so I will say happy birthday, mom. Happy I have birthday. to call her right after this. Aw, me too. That's weird. Oh, yeah. Uh, how many people are taking the course right now? You know, I'm not even sure. I, um, I can tell you it is less than the 186,000 people we have in the group, which just points me, which means we have a lot of people who've decided that I'm not important enough to, to spend time with. Um, but... We have less than that and more than 50. We're somewhere between 50 and 186,000. So it's not a million? I'm disappointed in you. Um, <clears throat> somebody <throat> asked, what do you think about the likelihood of success for people that insist on one cheat day a week to maintenance, to maintenance calories or above when trying to lose? Uh, it depends on your long-term adherence, but I would say you can be very successful with that. Yeah. If you're going up to maintenance, especially that's not, that's not that big of a deal. Somebody's taking the course here. Go Brad. Yeah. And somebody else. That was my, too. that was my captain planet fist pump. Yeah. Leanne said she signed up and she's loving it so far as well. Oh, thank you. All right. Are we done? We are out of here. All right. And guys. cue the outro music. Everybody but have a good week. Before we must say we are signing off and we will see you on Monday at the same macro time on the same macro channel. But uh, and cue the music. Oh, oh Jake caught you. me right in the middle of my uh, right in the middle of his dance. All right. Have a good one. <laughs>